let's go ahead and move on to topic number three got some more comic book stuff and i'm excited to talk about it it looks like we got some new casting but not in marvel but in the dceu the d the dc extended universe and um i'm, I'm really happy to talk about this especially i, I want to hear from Elio. i really want to hear uh from one take big dog or whatever because i know he's a dc head uh but i have the report right here uh from deadline it says finn Wittrock to headline green lantern hbo max series as guy gardner and uh i, I let larry uh and a couple other people know kind of how i felt about this early on uh, in the week uh that I, well actually I, I will say my opinion uh, on that but i'm gonna come <laughs> to you next uh elliot um how are you feeling yeah. about this casting with Finn <clears throat> with Trot? Mm -hmm. um how are you feeling about a green lantern hbo series and also are you familiar with the guy gardner uh green lantern opposed to you know hal jordan and the other ones that most people are more familiar with yeah uh guy gardner I i'm not as too familiar with him with hal jordan and obviously what we get with kyle and um uh um which i think they're doing with john stewart is gonna actually have him in the films but I, what I, from what i remember from kyle's story i or I say guy's story it's pretty complicated and and being a dc fan uh they dive into the multiverse with him two rings went out one went to hal jordan one went to him he didn't want to be the lancer at first and he came back into it and i think most of his story takes place like in the 80s if i'm not mistaken and he kind of comes into the present time so we'll see what they do because the, the word around town is that this series may or may not be kind of an anthology series that kind of focuses on the 40s i believe with alan scott then it transitions to the 80s with guy's mm -hmm. character and then goes into the present day with maybe jessica cruz and then we might get a hal jordan and then that leads into an actual uh green lantern movie Lead, led by John Stewart. So we'll see what comes with this character uh, in regards to how they're going to handle the show. But as far as his actor goes, the only thing I know him from, not necessarily in films, even though I've seen him like supporting cast every now and then, but I know he's heavily involved in American Horror Story, uh, Ryan Murphy casting in regards to uh, American Horror Story, American History Story. He does a lot of those TV show stuff. He was just recently in uh, Ratchet with Sarah uh, Paulson's character with uh, Nurse Ratchet. So he he's a fine actor. I think he, he's capable of, of handling a job. He doesn't really have that much. I, I've never seen him as like a a superhero charisma from what I'm seeing in American horror stuff. Cause he's normally playing like a bad guy or a villain or someone always up to something. So he's going to have to sell me on the charm and the charisma of being like an actual superhero. But we'll see. The only thing that the thing that gets me the most nervous about this whole series in its entirety is that uh, my man from the CW stuff is like one of the head writers and one of the head producers of this show, whose name slipped me right now. Uh, Berlanti, Greg Berlanti. Greg Berlanti. First few seasons of Arrow were fantastic, same with The Flash, but then you start throwing in the Supergirls of the world and all the stuff that just kind of, you know, it's got repetitive and, and, and CW to me, I, I haven't watched a CW show in so long because I just don't like their narratives and the way they, the acting and the stories and all that. So that gets me a little bit nervous, but hopefully this isn't CW, this is HBO Max, higher budget, maybe a little bit more mature stuff that they can bring into the show. So uh, fingers crossed, man, because I've been waiting for a good Green Lantern interpretation because Ryan Reynolds uh, <laughs> 10 years ago was not it for me. And, uh, you know, we were kind of cut short with an appearance from a, a Lantern from uh, Zack Snyder's Snyderverse. But fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Right on, right on. Before I come to you, one take, big dog, I just want to go through this. Uh, like you were saying, Elliot Wittrock has earned two Emmy nominations for American Horror Story, Freak Show, and Versace, American Crime Story. He is joining the Berlanti, Berlanti TV universe after working exclusively in series for the past seven years with another mega TV producer, Ryan Murphy. Uh, Wittrock has done multiple installments of American Horror Story, including the upcoming 10th season, which he recently wrapped, as well as Versace and Ratch, which has been renewed for a second season. And uh, that's just a little bit more about the actor right there. But coming to you one to Big Dog, how are you feeling about the casting? How are you feeling about the HBO Max series for uh, Green Lantern Corps? And uh, just also Guy Gardner, uh, um, you know, they're, they're, this is the first casting we've gotten for Green Lantern. How, how are you feeling about just, you know, Guy Gardner? Yeah, Guy Gardner as well. Oh uh, yeah, this, I think I'm, I'm I'm kind of I don't know I'm kind of all over the place on this one. One uh, I don't know too much about uh, this guy, 
as an actor. I've seen like his filmography and stuff, and I've seen I know I've seen quite a few movies that he and TV shows that he's been in, but I just don't necessarily like I don't remember him necessarily sticking out to me. And that's kind of what like Guy Garner did. Like Guy Garner is a character like that sticks out. And for a lot of like DC fans, like it's either a hit or miss. Like they either love him or they just absolutely hate him. So I don't necessarily know how they're gonna like pull that whole that whole thing off with him. And and the, I, I'm kind of with like Elliot. I get the whole uh, Greg Berlanti and the Arrowverse stuff, and, and I, I I get like the words there because like there. I, I mean, I, me personally, I absolutely love those shows. I love what they're doing with like Superman and Lois. Like I said, the first few seasons of Flash, Arrow. But I'm kind of licking this on the realm of kind of sort of what they did with like DC Universe, and uh, and I'm hoping they take that route, like with what they did with like Swamp Thing, uh, Doom Patrol, and Star Girl. Not necessarily Tice because I kind of feel like they that, they missed a lot on Tice. But for those other three shows, I like the maturity that they had, and I like the stories that they told within all three of those because those three are like probably some of the best DC live action shows in my opinion. So mm-hmm. if they can get if they th- there's so much you can do with like the Green Lantern story mm-hmm. on HBO, especially on HBO, I just kind of feel I just don't want them to try to go like too over the top, too early, and 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 kind of like blow it because if, if I, I I honestly feel like if you go too over the top early on with this and you don't nail this character the right way. It's gonna completely shut everything off for anything else people want to see done with like Green Lantern. And I also hope they don't do like the, a CGI type suit. I need like actual like suit, you know, and just like maybe like have it shine or something, but no, no CGI suits. Yeah, uh, let me and let me jump in here. This right here says, uh, see, I can highlight now. Written by Greg Berlanti and Mark Guggenheim and Seth Graham Smith, Green Lantern reinvents the classic DC property through a story spanning decades and galaxies, beginning on Earth in 1941 with the very first Green Lantern, secretly gay FBI agent Alan Scott, and 1984 with cocky alpha male Guy Gardner and half alien Bree uh, Jarter. They will be joined by a multitude of other Lanterns from comic book favorites, never before seen heroes. Now, just real quick, about how like I, I love the Green Lantern. Well, I ain't read the comics, but just that the the story and the lore of Green Lantern. I think that's cool as hell. Um, however, I'm not excited about this because I have never been a fan of Guy Gardner. I don't know much about him, but the little bit that I do know, I've never liked him. He's always been kind of a dick character. Mm-hmm. And so, if you know the lore of Green Lantern, those are supposed to be good people that get the the power the ring or whatever you know what i'm saying john stewart hal jordan those are good people they are worthy it's kind of like how you know more near your near works in marvel mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. are you worthy or not but you know kind of in the same vein so i just never understood like how he got the ring the power ring if he was if he was a dick or something like that now i think i remember somebody explaining it to me a number of years ago like he kind of stole it from somebody and it, yeah, it just, yeah. Uh, okay well then that, that makes more sense i, I don't want to come to the conclusions but i'm like how did he get it in the first place and so um i if if, if it was up to me i would have G- green lantern movies to focus mainly on like hal jordan john stewart and other killer wog and other famous green lanterns but have the uh the hbo max show just talk about the green lantern core like their origins you know back on uh was it planet oa i think and um you know like like green lantern emerald knights i don't know if any of y'all have seen that but that is a a number of stories that goes back from decades and thousands of hundreds of years and stuff like that Mm -hmm. uh but coming to you larry man do you are you a fan of finn witch rock or or are you excited about the green lantern hbo max show uh also did you like the ryan reynolds movie that came out i think 11 years ago and just how, how you feeling about all this uh, did anybody like the Ryan Reynolds movie? Yeah, I just wanted to, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds didn't even like that movie. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, you like you like Cole Young, so I, I wanted to. Uh, I just I, I had to make sure, you know. I, I, I wanted to. I, want, I don't want to assume. Cole you know. Young is the bomb. No, he's not. He's not. He's Cole the Young is the is 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 perfect for this generation. He's great as a. He's great to have basically an on-screen narrator. He's 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 allowing us to go into that world. 
through his eyes. But no, I did not like the, the Ryan Reynolds one. And to be honest with you, I'm sort of just holding my breath on this because DC will mess up every single live action movie they make or TV show. They're just will. They're just, it's always just a matter of time before they muck it up. So we'll see. Um, I did like Doom Patrol, though. That was great with, uh, you know, what's her name? What was Crazy Alice? I think her name. I thought she was uh, Crazy, Jane. Crazy Jane. Crazy yeah. Jane, right. She was probably mm -hmm. my favorite one in there. Um, but I don't, I don't know this guy who's gonna play him. In fact, when I first saw him, I thought he was, uh, I thought he was, what's his name? Um, Andrew Rennell, uh, the Andrew Rennell's the guy from Black Monday. Mm -hmm. I thought that was him, but I was like, that dude's gonna have to put on some muscle if that's gonna be him, if he's gonna play yeah. this dude. But it's not him, so that's fine. But I, no, this guy does nothing for me. You know, <laughs> I mean, he just, I mean, he may be a fine actor, but he doesn't stand out in any way, shape or form. Yeah, you know, I got you. I got you. Well, and, right. and to and to Larry's point, that's why I think they're going to like you just read too, Brent, not too long ago. I think they're going to surround him with some other maybe some more well-known lanterns, people that have a little bit more personality. Because, again, the from what I remember, I think he was. Like you said, Brandon, he was someone that kind of stumbled upon the powers. He was kind of like a backup replacement of Hal Jordan for a little bit. I think he was like mm -hmm. trapped in the Phantom Zone for for a while, uh, and then came out. He has a really messed up childhood. Went to detention centers all the time, so he's going to have that kind of gray area Green Lantern where he's going to need some other lanterns that have that more normal story and someone that has a little bit more of a, uh, a moral compass. And by the end of the season, he might come around to being that superhero that we might would expect him to be but i think again surrounding him with an alan scott a jessica cruz later on and then introducing them to set up again uh john stewart leading his own film it, it, it has some possibilities and again the first few seasons of whatever gregor berlanti touches are all gold again the first few seasons of arrow flash all that stuff was fantastic so hopefully it gets some of that love that we got from the first season of those cw shows plus some so uh we'll see man i, I i'm it's gonna be true dc yeah, dc it's man I, I, they're my favorite i love them and like larry said they, they dropped the ball a lot but i'm hoping that this sets up the, the tv show sets up the movies like what marvel's doing we have the the gcpd um show tie into batman and then we got the ava duvernay show so i'm hoping that they've they have a plan that's all i hope that they have a plan but Guy, but they got good he's supposed to be place. a dynamic personality he's supposed to be larger than life yeah. and this dude just seems like a wet blanket i don't know but maybe <laughs> maybe not Ooh. just that's just my that's just what i see when i look at him he doesn't do yeah. he does not jump off the screen to me but well, we'll 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 see we'll see and uh and people. But he's are, an actor, so you yeah, know I mean yeah, actors act. Yeah, yeah, yeah actors yeah. act. That that is true. That is true.